welcome back, everybody. I'm Alina Cho, in for Federica Whitfield this hour. You're in the CNN newsroom. President Bush has left Iraq following an unannounced farewell visit today. The president declared that the war in Iraq is on its way to being won. But an incident that disrupted a news conference today showed how much controversy the Iraq war continues to generate. <laughs> A man threw two shoes at the president before security officers dragged him away. CNN's Michael Ware joins us now from Baghdad. So as I was saying earlier, Michael may not like his policies, but certainly the man has great reflexes, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, he moved like a cat. And it was just so death. Actually, he moved like a boxer. The way he just shifted out of the way and the thing whizzed past his head. Now, the... Something to say about this incident. The man he threw this is actually an Iraqi journalist working for an Iraqi television network. And it appears he became so outraged at something that he threw these shoes, hurled them at President Bush's head. Now, not only is that obviously a statement that translates into any language in terms of the frustration and the, the pent-up anger here in, in Iraq about the occupation. But in this part of the world, in this country, it's the height of insult to throw your shoe at someone. I mean, it's beyond imagination to, to the, convey this to the non-Arab world. Normally, such an insult is only reserved for the most despised. Like, after the invasion, when the the statue of Saddam was pulled down and the Iraqis leapt upon it and slapped it with their shoes. Or we just saw it a few weeks ago when tens of thousands of Iraqis took to the streets in an anti-American demonstration and took off their shoes and hurled them at what? An effigy of President Bush. Perhaps somewhat prophetic. Alina? I, I want to get to uh, what the, uh, just incredible, I want to get to what the president uh, was actually mm. doing there today because uh, his fourth and final trip to Iraq as president since the war began, uh, he was outside the green zone today. Uh, he did a lot, uh, include, uh, including sort of celebrating a security pact that was recently signed. Uh, what's the significance of that and what, practically speaking, what will that do? Oh, look, this is going to do enormous things. I mean, unfortunately, this incident of the shoe throwing is going to become an icon of the war in Iraq. People are going to remember this forever, and it overshadows all the other purposes of President Bush's fourth visit here to the country. Now, foremost, he wanted to thank the troops for their ongoing service. But as he himself says, he wanted to celebrate these new agreements between Washington and Baghdad. Now, these agreements effectively are the beginning of the end of America's war here in Iraq. President-elect Obama campaigned on ending the war, but the Bush administration has already cut the peace deal, has already struck the agreement. Now, under this agreement, US forces have to be off Iraqi soil within three years. No negotiation, no question, no extensions. You're gone, is the Iraqi position, and that's in this internationally binding agreement. Now, also, we have the U.S. forces here on the ground, still more than 130,000 of them. Under this agreement, they don't operate as U.S. forces as much anymore. Everything they do, any combat operation, they have to go and coordinate with the Iraqi government. To search a house looking for Iranian Quds Force officers who are killing Americans, they have to go and get an Iraqi judge to give them a warrant. So this wraps the American military up in operational knots. So in so many ways, by signing this agreement, America has surrendered much of its capacity to wage war here in Iraq. Indeed, many officials on the, in the mission here on the ground, both military and diplomatic, have said for more than 4,000 deaths, the expenditure of so much treasure from American taxpayers, and for what? For this agreement? It does not preserve American interests, according to these people here on the ground working for President Bush himself, Elena. Uh, Michael, so interesting your insight into all of this, but I do want to uh, talk about what you alluded to earlier, which is that this shoe-throwing incident really is likely to overshadow yeah. so much of, of sort of the, the practical work that they're trying to do in Iraq. And, and I want uh, to get to the president's reaction, um, uh, what he said. I mean, he, he really uh, joked about it. Uh, and let's listen to his reaction. You can react on the other side, Michael. Mm -hmm. 
I believe we have that, uh, so what if that we got reaction issue, from Amy? the president. There we I go. I consider it an important step in, 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 uh, on the road toward an Iraq that can sustain itself, govern itself, and defend itself. But let me talk about the guy throwing the shoe. Uh, it is one way to gain attention. Uh, it's, it's like going to a political rally and having people yell at you. It's like driving down the street and have people not gesturing with all five fingers. Well, you got to hand it to him. He, he, did, uh, he did take it well, didn't he, Michael? Yeah, he did. You, you really do have to give it to President Bush. He didn't lose his composure. He moved like an athlete. And then he tried to turn the situation around by making this rather embarrassing incident a positive by citing it as an example, as, as you heard him say, essentially a free speech and the forward march of, of the democratic process here. But that, that's, I'm sorry, it's just simply outweighed by the resonance of this statement. I mean, apart from the theatrical drama of a journalist standing up and physically hurling his shoes at the head of the most powerful commander-in-chief in the world, the leader of the free world, it's the statement that it says to Arabs. It's an expression of how Iraqis or a large section of the community are feeling and it will play so acutely in the Arab world. Through one journalist, it's, you know, the feelings of so many have been expressed. And indeed, you have to point out that perhaps in, in a much more muted way, it's also the feelings of so many Americans, given the fact that President-elect Obama was brought to power with such an enormous mandate from the American people themselves, Alina. Michael, where our man in Baghdad? Michael, as always, thank you. Great to see you. Illinois if this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> Just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs>